Welcome back to our series on cloud native application development. My name is Jamie Lan and I'm a senior consultant for application development at Red Hat. On this video, we're going to explore Open API Generator. In our previous video, we created a simple Open API specification for making a to-do list and talked a little bit about contract first development. In this video, we're going to look at the next steps in that contract first development practice by using our Open API specification document, or OAS, to create a Spring Boot application to actually serve our API. If you followed along with the last video, you should be able to download your specification from Apicurio, or if you prefer, you can download the OAS file using the link below. The first step when using Open API Generator is to figure out which generator you want to use. Right now I'm on the website openapi-generator.tech. Um, if you click on the Generators button here, you're going to get a fairly large comprehensive list of generators that span a lot of different frameworks and languages. Uh, at the top you have your client generators and below that you have your server generators. There's also some generators for creating documentations and configurations. Um, but for our purposes, we're creating a Spring Boot server application. So we're going to look at this Spring generator here. If you click on the generator that you want to use, it's going to give you an informational page about that generator. Uh, before you actually do any code generation, regardless of which generation, generator you decide to use, I would recommend taking a little bit of time to look around this page. Uh, there's a lot of information on here, especially in this config option section at the top. Um, if you look here and you've created a Spring application or just any Java application before, you'll recognize some of this stuff, uh, artifact information, base package information. We've got a date library up there. Um, and below this, we have more information about mappings from the OAS type to whatever our language specific type is, um, and even more information below that. I'm not going to go through everything, but I would recommend uh, taking a little time to look at this page. Uh, now let's look at the command that we're going to use in order to generate our code. So here's the command that we're using, open API generator generate, and then we're going to specify um, our generator, Spring, and the library specifically inside of Spring we're going to use is the Spring Boot library. Uh, here you can see that we're specifying our input file. In this instance, it's just a local file that I have stored on my system, but note that you can specify a remote file here if you put in a URL to some sort of um, source code repository. Uh, we're going to output it in the current directory, and then I've got a handful of different configuration options here. Uh, I'm not going to go through each of these, but one that I do want to draw your attention to is this source folder equaling source main gen. Uh, now, by default, uh, OpenAPI is going to store your source and source main Java for the Spring generator. And if you've ever created a Spring application before, that's probably where you're used to storing your code. Uh, that's because generally source main Java is your source folder, and that's going to remain the case here. But what we're going to do is we're going to store any code that we generate inside of our source main gen folder and add that folder to our compilation path. Uh, the reason for that is part of contract first development, uh, or as part of contract first development, we should be able to regenerate any of our code any of our generated code at any point in time, and it shouldn't actually affect whether or not our file should run. Our OAS file should be our source of truth, not the generated files created from uh, OpenAPI Generator. So for that reason, we're going to put all of our generated files into this generated folder, and we're going to treat everything inside of this generated folder as completely immutable, meaning that even though we technically can make changes to it, we're not going to. We're going to treat it the same as uh, a target folder for a Maven build. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and run this and see what we actually get. So you can see here uh, it created a handful uh, of different files for us. If we take a quick look at what those files actually look like, um, yeah, 
if you've created a Spring Boot application before, again, uh, this is going to look like a pretty basic one of those with the name, uh, the main exception that we're in source main gin instead of source main Java. We've got our palm, our resources folder, our to do, all of uh, all of this good stuff. All right, if we click into source main gin API, uh, the first thing that I want to look at is the to do's API file. This is just a basic interface. Um, it does have some basic implementations here, but essentially this is just the interface that um, we created in order to store all of our swagger annotations. So we have our API annotations or API operations. Uh, this is all drawn from your OAS file. Uh, inside of each of these implementations, you can see we're returning back a response entity. And right now it's just saying HTTP status not implemented. So when we actually, if we are actually to build this code and hit one of these endpoints, we would just be getting a 501. The actual implementation is going to be happening in this to-dos API controller. This is where we're going to actually implement what's in our to-dos API. And we'll talk about that a little bit more briefly. Um, and then the last thing I want to point out is this to do uh, dot Java inside of the model. This is just the POJO representation of the object in your schema. Uh, so if we click down here and we look at our schemas, this is just the, the Java, uh, the, the POJO that represents this piece here. And you can see that it's got some of the um, swagger annotations up here as well as just some basic Jackson annotations. Nothing too special here. So as I mentioned before, the next thing that we're going to want to be able to do is actually add this generated folder to the class path. If we take a look at our palm right now, our source directory is still pointing to source main Java, which is what we want. But we also want uh, this generated folder to be one of the source directories so that it also gets compiled. And the way that we're going to do that is with a Maven plugin. So inside of the plugins down here, we're going to add a new plugin for adding a source new source directory. And it's going to look like this. So this is just a, a builder helper Maven plugin. It, it happens during the generate sources phase and it's just adding a new source folder and that source folder is source main gen. So pretty simple. At this point, we should in theory be able to come here and do maven spring dash uh, boot colon run. And our application should build. So we can see that we've started our application on port 8080. If we go to localhost swagger-ui.html, we can see our Swagger page. And if we try to hit any of these endpoints here, we can see that we get that 501 that I had mentioned before, because it's defaulting to the interface implementation. So let's actually implement one of these endpoints. Now again, the implementation is going to happen inside of this controller method. And in theory, if you wanted to, you could come in here and you could start implementing the method directly in here. So I could, uh, if we wanted to implement one of the gets, we could do the, the get to do and, and add our implementation and we would build and it would work. But as I mentioned before, anything inside of this generated folder is immutable and shouldn't be modified. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this controller implementation method into our Java source folder. So let's first create the Java source folder. And then let's create the same package, com red hat to do API. And then we're just going to move controller into there. And from here, we can stub out the method pretty, pretty easily. 
So let's start stubbing this guy out. Uh, to do. All right, we've stubbed out our response item, and now we just need to return it. So over here, we're going to do response entity dot, and now we need to figure out what uh, status code we want to return. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take a look at our YAML file, and we're going to scroll up to that endpoint, so this to-dos path. And we're going to look at our list of responses so we know what the contract is expecting us to return back. And in this case, it's a 200, which is an OK. So I go back here, and just do OK, and then we're going to return back that bodies. You want to make sure that you're actually returning back the correct um, status code because while there's no validation right now, we are going to talk in the future about something called uh, schema thesis, which is going to run tests against your endpoints and validate that all the response codes that you put inside of your contract are matched in your endpoints. Um, so it's good to just get in the habit of making sure to return back the right response codes um, right off the bat. All right, let's see uh, if our new changes have worked. So we're just going to do a rebuild. All right, we've rebuilt the project. And now, if we execute this guy, it should give us a 200 back with our stubbed out data. So we've got it, uh, we've got a working endpoint. So that's great. So the next part of this, that's part of the contract first idea, is we want to be able to regenerate this code. And we don't necessarily want to have to run a command every time we do that. Um, so we're going to want to integrate that directly into whatever our build um, process is. In our case, it's Maven. Uh, real quick, we're going to swap back to the website here. And if you go to the integrations piece, you can see some of the other integrations. It's got Gradle integration, there's CDCI stuff down here. Um, so you can take a look at this. It, it integrates in a couple different things. We're going to use the Maven plugin to integrate it into our code. So let's go back to Visual Studio. Uh, and we're going to go to our Palm, and we're going to add a new plugin. And this plugin is going to regenerate our um, generated source files. We are going to use this one here. So this is the Open API Generator Maven plugin. Uh, we're going to do it during the generate sources phase, which happens fairly early in the Maven lifecycle. And we're going to generate files based on this configuration. Um, this configuration, if you take a look at it, is going to look kind of similar to the command that we ran before. You can see we've got our base package information, uh, our artifact, instead of hard coding it, we're pulling it from our project palm. Um, one big difference here though is this input spec file. So if you look at this, uh, rather than using the to do YAML file that's on my my local machine, I've actually got it pointed to a GitHub source repo, uh, to do enhance to do YAML. If we follow this and take a look at what that file actually looks like, we can see um, that it looks fairly similar to the file that is on my local machine. We've got our to-do paths here. Um, but if we scroll down to the schemas here, uh, you'll see that there's this new user object. Um, so I added a new user object to our schema, and I've connected it to the to-do. 
and I've created all the paths for it. So in theory, we should see this new user object reflected when our Maven build happens and we regenerate our current um, generation folder. So if we go here, uh, we'll save it. Uh, my case Visual Studio is going to do, going to run the actual plugin for me, and you can see these guys all popped up here. Uh, if you don't have something that automatically runs a plugin, you're just going to go here, and you can just do Maven generate sources, and that'll actually generate the sources for you. So we'll let it generate this way too. Yeah. Um, so you can see. Um, that we're going to have an issue here kind of right off the bat with our newly generated code. Uh, we have this to do's controller file duplicated in both of our generated package and our Java source package, which means this won't compile. Uh, the issue is now that we've taken over this implementation Java file, we no longer want um, we no longer want OpenAPI generator to recreate it. And actually, if you click inside of your palm, uh, you'll notice that that also was overwritten and we lost both of our plugins there because that's another thing that OpenAPI Generator uh, recreates. So if we control Z to get our plugins back, I'm sorry if you have to do this manually yourself. Um, what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna go inside of this .OpenAPI Generator ignore file. If you've ever used the .get ignore, really any .ignore file, it's all fairly similar. It's basically just a big list of regexes that you can add, and you can see a lot of the rules here. So anything that we put inside of this ignore file, uh, OpenAPI generator will not regenerate. So let's make it so from this point forward, we no longer regenerate any of our controller methods. The way we're gonna do that is just star star slash star slash star and then controller.java. So now we're saying uh, to OpenAPI that we no longer want them to generate any of our controller classes. We'll take care of that. Uh, you also want to add a, some other common files here. Uh, we're going to make it so it doesn't override our palm.xml. A lot of times you're going to want to add your, you know, your properties file here. Usually you're going to want to be in control of that. So you'd want to do that and then move that into um, your Java source directory and outside of your generation source directory. Uh, for now, we'll just, we'll just have the controller in the palm for our purposes. So now, when I save this guy and we regenerate, um, and actually you need to delete the controller method. When it does the regeneration, it doesn't actually delete the generated folder and recreate it. It'll just add the new files. But if we delete the controller method here and we regenerate, you'll see that those controller Java files are no longer regenerated and our palm is still here. Uh, if we want to see that a little more explicitly, let's rerun the dot generate dot sh command. And you can see here, skip the generation of the to do's API controller Java due to that rule. So you can validate that your rules are correct uh, just by running the command again and actually making sure it specifically says it's skipping the generation of that particular file. All right, so at this point we've taken our OAS file and we've been able to successfully build a Spring Boot uh, server application from it. Uh, at this point, we the only Java code that we would actually need to check in is this to do's API controller. And then any sort of developer could come and download that and start it up and it would create all the files inside of this generated folder and they would currently just be able to hit our um, to do's endpoint. But we could pretty easily stub out the rest of this uh, in real life, you'd probably also want to connect this to some sort of data source. Um, you're more than welcome to do that if you'd like. But we've created a working application in a fairly short period of time. Um, so I hope this really showed how, how simple it is to, to just go from 
basically nothing uh, to a fully working server with uh, the contract first development approach. Uh, in some of our future videos, we're going to be looking at some other things, um, some other technologies that work with OpenAPI. Uh, also in our next video, we're going to be looking at templating. So we'll have a little bit more control over some of these files that uh, that we're creating here, specifically with the model here, we can add some custom annotations with it and that sort of thing with mustache templating. Uh, and we'll take a look at that in the next video. Uh, I hope you've guys, uh, you guys have all found this very useful. Uh, thanks. Thanks for watching.